Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Salon Paul in the regular playthrough of the new 4.2 point, pardon me, 4.22 update. Uh, although also, other also known as the Interceptor update um, with the patch. And we are at the, stra at the space station here getting ready to exit and go on with the rest of our mission. Um, I'm also looking for ships. I just wanted to see if anything had arrived that would be halfway decent, but I'm not really getting much on the second wave of ships coming in. Uh, yeah, it looks like a shuttle's coming in, that's about it. It's hoping for a halfway decent explorer, but, yeah, not really getting much. These shuttles I'm not really too keen on. They can be pretty decent ships, but I don't really have the money to spend on a very expensive ship right now. But, I was hoping for something better. And more haulers. So, okay, well let's continue on with the mission. Let's not waste any more time. We're going to waste a little pulse juice to get to our next spot, which is right there. It says 49 seconds, so it's not on this planet. It's on the planet behind it, which is where we made our base to begin with. Which is our paradise planet. As you know, we've already lived through two storm systems on it, but we shouldn't see any more of those. We should be okay. All right. So as you can see, it says it's going to take about 20 seconds to get there. And let's see, we have star bulbs, we have copper, paraffinium, and silver. Uh, copper is very interesting. Looks like we had a copper deposit near our base. We may want to investigate that. We can always use more chromatic metal. Refined. Refined copper into chromatic metal at a 2 to 1 ratio. Now, as you get to other planets, you can find other planets that have emerald, that have, uh, not emerald, that emerald, it's a green metal. Um, indium, and I'm missing one. Yeah, it's right on the tip of my tongue. It's a red metal. Cadmium. And they actually go at a much better rate. Okay, so that's our, that's our, our base, but we really needed to go over this way. So, let's head this way. How far away was that? Come on, register. Hello. Twenty-three seconds. All right, all right, we'll stay. We'll stay at ground level. While we're at it, we'll do a little scan. Looks like we got a yeah, little bit of a settlement there. Nothing special. An abandoned campsite. They might call those. Ah, uh, what do you know? Proximate distress signal. I guarantee you, it's here. So this is where we're headed. And it happens to have a landing pad that we can land at, so we can save some of our launch thrusters. And if you're wondering, there you go. Yeah, these things are pretty awesome. You can find some good stuff here, too. It's worth some decent cash. Usually. Log damaged. Partial records available. The signal had l has let... I'll try that again. The signal has led me to the wreck of a freighter. Colossal fragments of metal scattered across the landscape. Were these messages nothing but the misfiring circuits of a long-forgotten ruin? Nestled among the debris, I find the pilot's log, blinking, awaiting input. Request the log. Instead of displaying the ship's log, the terminal spits out a strange sequence of numbers. They are followed by a short message. The anomaly comes for the stars. Take flight. A schematic for a hyperdrive is attached to the end of the message. Take the blueprint. I pull the blueprint from the computer. This hyperdrive blueprint is for a conventional starship, not a freighter of this size. Someone placed this here after the crash, hoping it would be found. So there's our hyperdrive. We need chromatic metal, which we've got, and a microprocessor, which we need to buy. We can make them, but it's just easier to buy them if you have the money. Speaking of money, let's go get some. So first thing we're going to do is go through here. See, it even says salvage materials from the wreck. So we're going to go in here and salvage what we can. So we have to be careful, though, because these release, release radioactive gases. So we have to exit right away. See? The radioactive thing came up at the bottom? Yeah. Hmm, really? Okay. How much do we have left? Yeah, why not? We'll get more carbon later. Okay. Open up both doors. We're going to open up the cargo pod. There we go. More nanites. Okay, well that's kind of useless to me. Now this one, I'm going to try something here. We're going to go into first person view. We're 
we're going to look and we should find that. And if we go there, we should be able to pick it up without digging. But we got to get away from it. More nanites. Okay. Where is it here? Oh, we got it that time. That's all it's giving us nanites. That's really, really odd. Because we should be able to... I gotta get out of that first person view. That drives me nuts. It should give us more stuff. Okay. There it is. I was hoping for, like, there, something like that. That's not really worth that much. But still, it, it, antimatter housing is handy that we can build uh, warp cells. So, at least we got one. Okay, look. Okay, get a little closer. There we go. And last one. Maybe a... Nope, more nanites. Well, okay then. That's all we got out of this, is just, uh... That, and that's it. So let's go ahead and put our hyperdrive in here. We can at least get part of it installed. Uh, let's see. We can also put that teleport module in. Let's put that over here. It takes three wiring looms. And we need the economy scanner, which requires one more wiring loom. And requires five microprocessors. So that requires five, that requires five. We need ten of those and an antimatter, which we don't know how to make yet. So that's okay. So, guess where we're going? Space station. So, we're not going to take the long way to the space station. We're going to try to go to our base. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to take the teleporter. Oh, what's that? Looks like a building. Hmm. Let's check it out see what's there. I don't think I see any sentinels here. This might just be a decent building. Let's see what we can acquire from there. Oh, nope. There are sentinels here. Okay. We don't need anything from there just yet. I'm not going to worry about this. So let's head back to our base. You gotta be careful of some of the buildings you break into because you could ac accidentally hurt some of your storyline. So be careful of raiding other buildings while you're here. Later, when you're in the free game mode and free exploring, yeah, knock yourself out. But kind of hold off on it at first. Wrecked ships, that's one thing, but this, nah, that's something else entirely. Okay, so while we're here, nice little multi-tool. Let's go to this guy and see what he's got. Uh, yeah, he has some microprocessors, so we'll get we'll get a few from them. They're expensive, as you can see. Uh, I do like to have extras of these, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up the two. Uh, do we need anything from here? We don't need any of those right now. The upgrade charts would be nice, but we'll hold off on it. Let's see this, because this is a little different from the first one we found. Now, nope, C-Class, it does have a supercharged slot on it, but not worth the spending the money on right now. Uh, we already got money from that. Let's see what the trade terminal has. They have microprocessors. All right, so we got three so far, so we need seven more. Got it. While we're here, let's grab some more uranium, because we can always use some. And, eh, we'll grab some ferrite dust while we're at it. Why not? Okay, so now we can upgrade this. While we're in there, we can upgrade, not that, the economy scanner. And that's very handy to use. It's handy to scan other systems when you're in hyperspace. So I'm going to make sure I keep that. That's very good. Now, one thing we wanted to do is we wanted to upgrade our laser, but um, I'm going to hold off on upgrading it because it's going to be a free upgrade later on in the storyline. Find the antimatter recipe. Uh, return to the ship. Ah, here we go. 
Auto Diagnostics Report. Hyperdrive successfully installed. Hyperdrive fuel status, empty. My hyperdrive is complete. Perhaps I really will find answers out there amidst the stars. But without warp cells, I will be going nowhere. I need to find a source of antimatter. Tune scanner to antimatter. Uh, search for antimatter traces and hit the C button. We can do it while we're sitting here too. Oh, it just said Atom atmospheric interference detected. Perform planetary scan from orbit. Oh, you smart little cookie, aren't you? There we go. Do a scan. Antimatter detected. Oh, it's on another planet. Yay. And guess where it is? It's on the planet, right by the space station. So, again, we're gonna send. We're gonna save some pulse fuel here. Where is my? There it is. We'll go to our base and use the teleporter. Go to the space station. That way, we don't have to pulse as far. As I can get myself acclimated as I'm flying here. I mean, we got we we have the resources to be able to refuel pulse drive, but early in the game, sometimes you may not have that. So you gotta know to do alternative things to get what you need. There we go. Okay. Space station. And we warp. And it's a lot quicker to get to the space station. This way, as you can see. And then jump in your ship. And because the planet we're going to happens to be right next to the space station, the pulse driving that we need to do here is going to be rather quick. There we go. And you see it's a lot closer. Yep. We won't use nearly as much pulse drive juice as I like to call it. Oh good, it's a sunny side today. Okay, antimatter trace approximate location. So again, we're looking for probably an abandoned building, I'm guessing. If I remember correctly. Oh, and we do a scan and we see that there's a building right there near the approximate location. That's likely where we're going. And there it is. Now something else we can get into these abandoned buildings. I'm going to park a little bit of a ways away. Is we can get whispering eggs. You really have to interrupt. That, my friends, is a titan worm. They're common on most planets. They don't do anything but do that. Interrupt your interrupt your stream or your video. Hey, you condensed carbon. There we go. Gather up things while you can. So we'll get a save point, and we'll get a little bit of nanites, and we'll get one of those uh, one of those navigation data, as you can see. So we'll put you down here. I'm going to go ahead and keep the projectiles for now. All right, hot planet, right. Now, one of the things you can do here is you can gather up these eggs. I'm going to show you a little technique of gathering them. These things are worth a lot of units. Definitely worth the time if you can do it. The trick, trick is this will release the guys from underneath, the monsters and monstrosities, if you will, from under the ground, as soon as you try to harvest these. The key to it, just keep moving. Pick it up and move. They may run into you, they may spit at you, but as long as you're moving, you'll be fine, I promise. There we go. Just gather around, get them one at a time. Go on to the next batch around the other side. There we go. Ooh, look at that. See, he spat at me, but he didn't hit me because I'm over here. I'm over here. I'm over here. See? Not a problem. Just keep moving. There we go. <laughs> Whoop, somebody just ran into me. That's okay, just keep going. You notice I didn't get injured. Occasionally you'll get injured. It's okay. 
unless they're really hammering you and you stay still too long, you really don't have anything to do. So that guy just jumped at me and he missed me. That one jumped at me and he missed me. Just keep going. You can skip some sometimes and just move on to another batch. See? Look at that. He's going to turn. He's going to try to jump at me. And he got me, but I'm not hurt. See? Look at that. These things are definitely worth the money. Jump over the ones that you can't get around. And just keep going. Two for one. Try to go to run and then stop and then run and then stop. It's always much easier that way. Whoop. Whoop, he got me. That's because I was standing right in front of him when he spat at me. Whoop, that one missed. Ha ha ha. Wow, that's a pretty rich uh, place. That guy hurt me. That's okay. Nothing there. This one's empty. This one's empty. We got two down. That one's empty. Three down. Four down. Uh, that one's got one left. Uh, it looks like there's two left at that one. We'll come back around to it. This one's empty. Just want to check my... Uh, whoop, hello. Uh, that one's empty. Okay. So I think we're done with this side, right? And we're done with this one, I think. Nothing else there? Uh, nope. Nothing else there. So we just got that one little cropping left. We'll go ahead and head over there and get the last one or two. Nope. Hey, come on now. Oh, looks like that was it. Huh? And we'll go up and out of the way real quick. I think I got them all. Let's see how many we got in our inventory, shall we? Uh, okay, so 10 of them. You see they're worth 700,000 for 10 of them. So that's 1.4 and uh, 1.8. So we've got 1.8 million in these guys. And we can sell them at any trade station, trade trading post. Okay. And what happens? I'm going to have to deal with these guys all over the place. It looks like actually there's one more egg left over here that I haven't gathered yet. Yep, there he is. Nope, oh, okay. Okay, just go back up here. Life support power is low. Let's put some oxygen in there. And we're going to be going inside in a moment. Now, I just want to take a scan around. Doesn't look like there's any more eggs. The door that we need to get into is, I think, on this side. Over here. Yeah, there it is. So just give it a little bit of time. These guys are going to give up interest in you. You could shoot them if you want. You don't really get anything for it. But after a little bit, it'll say swarm subsiding. And then you can just go in. You can also just go inside because they can't attack you while you're inside. Okay. Okay. There we go. And your temperature level stabilizing. Now, if they're standing right outside the door, sometimes they can spit at you while you're there. So, just keep that in mind. So, we're going to search all the things in here. There's our life support if we need it. We're going to learn a new word. Uh, thank you. We learned the word, the geck word for friend. That's nice. Okay, we're going to do the haunted terminal in a moment. Let's get to the other side and gather up what other, other materials are here. Uh, we can't search that. We don't have the materials to do so. That just recharges our shield, which we're fine with. Ooh, it was fine until he hit us. Get some oxygen out of him. Okay, I think that's good here. Let's head back. Alright, let's see. Continuing the storyline. Terminal online. Selecting key. Decrypting. Success. The terminal is clogged with an unnerving, pulsating slime. Nevertheless, it appears to function. As I touch the input panel, the alien substance reacts violently. I make a note to avoid getting closer. The device opens, revealing a single unblinking crimson eye. It prints out a blueprint for antimatter, accompanied by a strange message. Take the blueprint, read the log. You will find us when the time is right. And a whole bunch of 16s. Okay, and there it is. That's how we make it. Chromatic metal and condensed carbon. We happen to have condensed carbon from uh, searching through some of those canisters and stuff like that. As you can see, 
There's carbon, and we have condensed carbon, plenty of it. So let's make an antimatter. And we needed to make one of those, so we already have one. So I'm going to make a second one, and I'm going to make a second one of these because we can make it. Okay? And then we're going to make two warp cells. One, two. And we're going to be putting them in our ship here in just a minute. Let's go head out that way. Okay, so it's telling us to craft antimatter, which we did. Assemble the antimatter housing, which we did. Craft the warp cell, which we did. So it's going to pop up a couple more times here. You noticed? They're all gone. And my light is still on. There we go. Okay. So you don't have to worry about them hounding you forever. You know, that's it. So let's get in our ship. And we need to charge our warp drive. There we go. So now we're half charged. Like those two two warp cells gave us half a charge. Okay. Hyperdrive you fuel. Launch into space and test interstellar flight systems. Or interstellar systems, as it says. Take a little short burst out into space. Access the galaxy map. So we hit the X button. We go to the galaxy map and select it. And it gives us a look around. Now we could stay in this mode, but what happens is, as you if you have as you have the system selected, you really can't do much. You can tell it to go that way if you want, or you can right click, and it gives you access to look around freely. Now you can only go about a hundred light years. That's the furthest you can go with the current system that you have. So keeping that in mind, you won't be able to go everywhere that you want to, yet. But you can make them bigger. Occasionally, you run into places like this. Anom anomalous s signal blocking warp. It's a dissonant system. That's part of the new update. It allows you to go there and look for sentinel ships, sentinel multi-tools, fighting sentinels. It really doesn't want you going there just yet. It wants you sticking to the game plan. Now, if you use your arrow buttons, you can scroll through Galactic Core, re-explore, and Galactic Core again. Stick with Galactic Core for now and go wherever it's telling you. Now, if you hit the R button while you're in this mode, it'll tell you the economy for the system that you're headed to. And this one happens to be a dissonant system. So guess what? We can get ourselves a ship here. Awesome. We're on our way. So we may hang out in the system for a little bit because we can get ourselves a free Sentinel ship, but it's going to require a little bit of effort on our part. There we go. First contact. Nobody's been here yet. Very interesting. Okay. Starship monitoring system reports error. Guidance system malfunction. Searching for other routes. Searching, searching. Obtained. Destination in 1616. Yeah, you can see it's kind of messed up. Accept new guidance. Let's accept it. Plotting route. Here we go. So I'm going to go back into the cockpit, even though it tells you where we can find fuel, because I want to look at these planets. Foaming planet, okay. Let's go over here. That is the planet we're going to, and it is a poisonous planet. Okay, so we got fungal mode. That's where we're going to be headed. There should be a, another planet or two here. Oop, there's one right there. That looks promising. Looks like it's kind of cold, though. Yep, Arctic. Okay, it looks like there's a moon. I wonder if we can focus on it. Oh, yes, we can. Oh, nope, we can't. We stay just like that. We gotta hold still. And also a very cold moon, huh? Okay. Looks like there's one right in front of us. Salvageable scrap. Paradise planet. Go figure. So we can put another base on here. And there's a planet behind it. I don't think there's any others that we haven't seen yet. I think we've already seen that one. Yes. Okay. So what do you want to do here? Should we go on with the storyline right now? Or should we go ahead and look for ourselves a ship? I don't like the idea of looking for a ship. What do you think? Oop. I wasn't trying to enter the atmosphere. I want to get behind the planet. All right, let's take a look. There's our planet. Let's take a quick peek. Hmm, gamma root uranium cobalt. 
Interesting. So it's not showing us in the normal story mode. It doesn't seem to be showing us the dissident planet that we're looking for. So this could be it. Let's find out. I guess we're going to do the storyline for now because it's not going to show us the planet we're looking for. Very interesting. Very interesting. I wonder. We'll know when we get to the planet. I mean, it's purple in look, but, you know, we really can't tell until we get down to the planet. But the dissident planets, the ones that have the, uh, those corrupt sentinels on it will be purple in nature when we get down there. They'll turn purple in the sky and everything like that. And you'll also find special rocks and stuff on it. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I already think I know where it is. I think it's right here. This may not be the planet in question we're looking for, but we will find it, I promise you. All right, we want to get to these memories of the Viking. Chirpang, 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 yig, yig, yig. The stone resonates, producing a sound that fills my mind. A vision begins to take shape. I see two large aliens locked in combat. Eventually, one triumphs, leaving the victim, their victim to bleed to death. With the last of their strength, the vanquished alien gestures towards me. Except the knowledge. The name Viking floats in my vision, an echo of the strange vision I just experienced. A word in this alien tongue is seared into my brain. Now, none of the others will give you that from this day forward. They'll just teach you a new word. Interloper is always one of the next ones you get. Traveler is going to be another. And of course, Gra in regards to the Viking. Um, probably regarding words. Yes, we learned five words. Okay, so here we are. The structure is unlike anything I've encountered on my journey so far. Everything about it is so obviously alien, so obviously out of place. As I stare at it, words form themselves in my mind, a strange fragment of broken speech. Is it Traveler? Is it Friend? Traveler. It feels strange responding to questions I am unsure that I am being asked. But something has clearly taken notice of my reply. I am overwhelmed by a sense that something has awoken, that someone is watching me. It forms another question. Is it first? Is it last? I'm going to say last. I do not know how I am being spoken to. This monolith is ancient and I cannot escape the feeling it has asked these questions many times over. It asks again, have they seen the crimson eye? Has the crimson eye seen them? Likelihood of anomaly exceeds safety parameters. Breach detected. Alert. Alert. The boundaries fall. The walls collapse. Your universe awaits. Find us, traveler. Ooh. Chills. And we get a warp cell out of it. Isn't that nice? Find the mysterious messenger. Make your way into space. So let's take that that we just got, and we're going to put it in our starship. There we go. While we're here... And while we're here, okay, we're all charged up now. We still need to make an antimatter, so let's make one of those, and we'll put that in here. What this does is it's a teleport receiver, so it extends our ability to communicate with our ship from a distance and go in and out of the inventory that's in there. Okay, and we can always take it out of our ship later and put it in a ship that we find. Hint, 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 hint. I think we're going to be staying in the system for a little while. All right, up we go. Okay. Just give it a couple moments. Nothing, huh? I want to stop by the space station because I want to save this system. And there's a paradise planet here, too, so... With salvageable scrap on it, so go figure, right? That can get us some serious cash. Plus, we got those eggs on us. We might as well sell them while we're at the space station. I think this is a good place. We'll go ahead and pause here. And we'll pick up in the next episode. Yep, We're upside down to the station. Station. 
I said station. That's right. Here's looking at you, kid. Okay, there we are. So let's go ahead and sell these whispering eggs, first of all. Now, we don't really want to crash the economy here. That's a lot of whispering eggs to sell at once. So we're going to wait for a pilot to land. We'll sell it to him. So it won't affect the economy of the system that you're in. Interesting how that works, huh? Let's put that in our starship while I'm thinking of it. And while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and reorganize some things just a little. Put you down there, and you down there. Cobalt can go over here. Okay. Yep, any time now. Any time now. High voltage, sustainable. So they're also a two star out of three. Hmm. Well, we're going to pause here for just a moment because I don't want to extend this video too much longer. And we'll pick up in just a couple seconds when the uh, when a ship lands. See you guys in just a few moments. Okay, we're back. Looks like we finally have some visitors. One's a fighter. Those are expensive guys right there, even though it's a B class. But that one might be a little cheaper. Also, a, wow, it's more expensive than that one. Oh, okay, it's a little different. That guy has a little droid on board, kind of like a uh, R2 unit from that famous series of movies that we all know and love. See? A little droid unit up on, on the wing there. It's pretty cool. Uh, and then one of those pieces of garbage. Yeah, uh, pardon me, I mean a shuttle. Uh, shuttle, did I say something wrong there? Sorry about that. I meant shuttle. Not that this ship I'm next to is any better. But while we're here, like we said, we're going to sell some stuff. Do this by Keen Dude. Gra, Sell. Where are they? Uh, there we go. Not bad. 1.8 million. There we go. We're at 8.8 .8 million. So we should be able to get a halfway decent ship. Not that. That's interesting. Hoping that we get another ship in here that is not one of those guys. So that uh, that one, look, that shuttle looks like an X X wing almost a little bit there. That's hilarious. They both do. They're both exactly the same. That's an A class at 10 million. That's a B class at 6.8. They got a lot of storage on them. 30, yeah, 30 and 18. That's pretty good. Oh, another one right next to me, huh? Oh, now see, now that's what I'm talking about. Even though it's a C-Class, it looks really cool. Look at the wingspan on this thing. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and waste my money on it. Absolutely. So what, what the one thing we need to do is we need to go to our starship. Okay, pull everything off of it. You want to use X... Anything else we want to remove? I don't think we can remove anything else. Nope, we can't. Okay. And just in case, let's take a look. Oh, that's one of the more expensive ships, yeah. Okay, let's go to this guy. We're going to buy this ship here. Just make sure I didn't miss something here. Nope. Okay, so we're going to buy his ship. You'll notice that we have the ability to do so here at the number two spot. I'm going to negotiate a price. He looks like he has extra shield, too. That's great. We will have lost our hyperdrive ability, so we probably should have done it. But it has a supercharged slot on here, so negotiate the price. We can exchange it for 1.5, which is what I'm going to do here. Okay, so say goodbye to the old ship, in with the new. This is now our ship. And you see he's taking over the ship over there. Okay? So, let's transfer some stuff back from our exosuit. Okay, we put that in the ship. Where is the uranium and the pyrite? Tritium. We'll put the gold and the silver on there as well, and that should be it. And we now have two storage augmentations, strangely enough. But I'm going to save that for my Sentinel ship when I get it. So we have the teleport receiver. So let's put you here. We're going to put you here to boost that. We have the hyperdrive. It's supercharged. I'm probably going to leave it that way for now. That there, put that there. 
This is our economy scanner, and this is our rockets, just in case we get into a battle. It comes in handy to have that. So, I'm glad I saved them. Okay, and we have a little more storage now, too. So, you'll find that this is going to be a nice little ship to fly around in. It's going to have a little more um, hyperdrive range. It's at 154 because of where we're at. We do need some hyperdrive fuel, so we're going to actually make some right now. I don't think we can make any more of these. We're out of oxygen. So, whoops. Let's go ahead and make our warp cell. There we go. So now we can go to a new system. So let's jump in the ship. And I think this is going to be the end of our episode here, folks. Let's take her for a spin, shall we? Now one good thing is the interior is really cool. It's kind of a rounded interior. So that's pretty cool looking, isn't it? And you can see a lot more on your interior when you're flying. It's very nice. Plus you can see the, the uh, at the left there where it says unmapped, you can see the coordinates a lot easier too in this ship and from the outside we go into the camera mode you'll see that it does look pretty sharp when it's flying got this long long wingspan so I kind of like that it's kind of a nice looking ship so what we're gonna do let's go ahead and access the galaxy map we are gonna come back here now that we've been to the space station and it's taking us on in the That's funny, it now says it's water, rather than... Hmm, we'll see what happens. Okay. So we need to go, instead of free explorer, there. So that's our next location. So we're going to go ahead and go here. This is next, and we're going to do our warp drive. And here's where we're going to end. Now, if I'm not mistaken... I think, if I remember correctly, we should be getting our anomaly at this point. So, and we could end on the anomaly. So this one ran a little bit over. Sorry about that, folks. But we got ourselves a decent ship now. Ooh, okay. Let's make a turn around from here. I don't really want to be in an asteroid field. Just yet. We should get some communication coming up any second. There it is. Incoming transmission. Source unknown. You are not alone. Please identify yourself. I'm... You identify yourself. You left me. Why did you... Tell them you are sorry. Don't lie to me. You Even the others did not. Ask who you are speaking to. There is no reply. The communicator falls silent. Though the channel remains open. Very interesting, right? But we've received coordinates on a planet's surface, so we can head there. So that is going to be our next thing. But before we do, we're going to end our episode. So we're going to stop here at the space station. And we'll pick up where we left off in our next episode. So as we come to a landing, I'm going to go ahead and start parting ways. I want to thank you all for watching this episode. There is that little thumbs up button down there. If you like the episode, please hit that. That's the like button. And I really appreciate that. That really helps the metrics in regards to the analytics that YouTube does. And if you haven't subscribed, please feel free. I really appreciate it. And I have a lot more episodes I'll be coming out with. Thank you very much for watching. And we will see you all in the next episode. Everybody take care.